In this video, I'll be showing you a summary of my workflow on how I've been creating these animations and also how I'm using AI to improve and speed up my animation workflow. The programs I use, and I'll run you through them in this video, are Dash3D for 3D characters, Mixamo for character animations, Android Engine for environments, and Stable Diffusion for AI image to image conversion, and the usual suspects Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. First, I find the 3D characters for my animations. I use Dash3D, which is free to download and use. They have a huge variety of high quality 3D characters modeled and ready to use. You can purchase these characters as low as $10. Also, the majority of these characters are adjustable, so I can pick one and customize them to fit my vision. For example, I customized this robot character in Daz Studio and I've been using it for my animated web series. This is a boy character that I've used for my first AI assisted animation. Once I've picked my character, I have to add the animation. This is where I use Mixamo. Mixamo is a resource of hundreds and hundreds of different character animations. And fortunately, they're all free to use. For example, this is one animation I've downloaded, applied it to the boy character from Dash 3 d and used it in my short animation. After character and their animations are sorted, I have to place them in the right environment and for that, I'm using Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is also free to download and use, and it provides you with a large number of high quality 3D environments that are modeled and ready to use. There are a number of free environment assets to use, but most of them are not free. I've purchased this asset because I love that they provide the environment in different seasons, and it fits very well with my animated web series, especially for the time-lapse sequences. This one gives me the ability to use the same location but change from spring to autumn to a snow winter by switching between the landscape material, which is just a click of a button. After I have all these assets, I have to put them together. In Dash3D, all I need to do is install this plugin called Dash2 Unreal Bridge from Dash3D website. Then in Dash Studio, I select the characters, go to files and use Dash2 Unreal. This is where you can install the plugin for Unreal Engine to import the characters. Once that is done in Unreal Engine project, in the settings, you'll have to activate the plugin and restart the program. Then you'll be able to import the character in your Unreal Engine project. I'll include a link in the video description with more details on the DAS to Unreal workflow. To import the animation from Mixamo, all I need is this plugin called Mixamo Animation Retargeting 2 which can be found on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. It's very simple to use and you'll find all the details and how-tos on their YouTube channel. Now I can place my characters in the environment I've picked. And using a sequencer, I can apply the animations directly onto them. Of course, each of the animations will need a slight adjustments, but they're very basic and quick to do. I can also combine a few different animations together, which I find very useful. Here you can see that I'm combining an idol animation with the animation of him drawing something. In addition to that, I also have the freedom to easily modify every single animation. Here I wanted this character to have her legs up at the beginning of the animation. All I needed to do was to adjust the limb rotations and add a few keyframes. And here is the result in my animated web series. Lastly, in Unreal Engine, I can animate the sun, which I thought was cool, and it fitted my project very well. Now I'll run you through the making of this animated time-lapse shot as an example to demonstrate to you the rest of my workflow. The compositing of this shot is done in After Effects. Using the environment asset from Unreal Engine, I've created three identical shots, one in a snow winter, one in autumn, and one in spring with lush vegetations. If you remember, this was done easily by simply changing the landscape material. Then in After Effects, all I had to do was to find a way to transition between these three shots. 
I did this by masking random areas to give the impression that the landscape is changing organically. And then I expanded the mask's areas for each shot and overlaid them on top of each other. This is the result I got. Once that is done, I export the animation into a JPEG sequence. And that converts all the frames into JPEG images. And the next stage is where I use AI to reshape my images. For the AI works, I simply use a stable diffusion image to image function to convert each of these frames into the final picture. I'll put the link in the description that shows you how to set up a stable diffusion on your computer. This is the stable diffusion interface. I upload one of the frames and you can see the prompts I've used in these boxes to shape the image into what I want. There are different models to choose from up here and each of them produce different results that I can play with. Down here I adjust the sizing to match my imported image and I play with these numbers to get the result I want. Click on generate to give it a go. Then I keep playing with the prompts and the numbers to get the result I'm happy with. Once that is done, I use the batch tab, insert the input directory to my JPEG sequence and create an output directory for the resulted images. Click on generate again to complete. For this shot, I did a second batch render, changing the prompts to suit a spring environment. As you can see, there are a few details that are not right. The robot's face and the flower on the corner are not right, but we'll do a separate batch render for that. Again, click on batch. I create a new output directory for the spring shot and off we go. The next one is to create a set to capture those missing details. Lowering the CGF scale and denoising strengths helps reveal those lost details. Once I'm happy with what I have, I repeat the batch render with a new output directory. Back to After Effects, I import the three resulted image sequences. I overlay the three clips on top of one another and transition the snow scene into the spring scene. Then I use the masking tool to add the missing details from the stable diffusion layer which had those details. Here is the final result. So now you might ask, why do I use AI? There are a few good reasons to use AI. The first one is that you can use it to add details. You can see how in these images, the wet muddy ground looks more detailed. Also the snow melting looks more organic rather than simply fading out. Secondly, I can use AI to achieve the look I'm after. I wasn't happy with the 3D images coming out of Unreal Engine. Instead of spending hours fixing the lighting, changing the material, the shading and the looks, I simply used the prompts in Stable Diffusion to achieve the look I want. And it saved me a lot of time, which is the third and the biggest reason to use AI. Another way to save time using AI is that I don't really have to use a 3D environment. I can simply find the stock footage for my environment and use After Effects to place my 3D character in it, and then use a Stable Diffusion AI prompts to blend them together. This is a method I've used a lot in my short animations, and that is how I was able to create my first AI-assisted animation over a weekend. With that in mind, using AI helps me put more time and focus on the main thing in an animation, and I'm talking about this story. During the making of my web series called A Robust Dream, I was able to revise and update this story as I was creating the animations, without too much delay in delivering the final product. These clips here are from my upcoming last two episodes of my animated web series, which I've been creating using this very same methodology. If it wasn't for the help of the current AI technologies, creating these animations would not have been possible by one person, and instead of months, it would have taken years to complete. I'll be uploading these new animations on my channel within the next few days, so please subscribe to be notified when they're available. Thank you for watching and I hope you've got something out of this video. Please share, like and leave a comment with any questions. That is all and I'll see you guys in the next one.